So you spend all this money, you become a dive instructor, you start teaching students, and that's really all there is to it. Well, not quite. What's up guys, this is Brian again from Lake Hickory Scuba and Marina. If you are a subscriber to us, I want to first say thank you for being a subscriber and watching our videos. Your support means the world to us. If you're new to our channel, there's a little subscribe button down below. Just simply click that subscribe button and there's a little bell icon. If you'll simply click it, you'll be notified each and every time that we upload a new video. And we got a ton of content on here. We've got content for our recreational divers, our technical divers, our side mount divers, and so forth and so on. So definitely go check out some of our playlists list as well. But in today's video, what we're going to be focusing on is the process for us dive professionals and how we actually renew for the upcoming year to stay pretty much a dive professional. There's a lot of chatter here recently on a lot of the forum sites and it never fails. It always happens this time of the year. If you get on some of the forum sites, you'll go in there and you'll see these articles where people are saying, well, dive instructors should be really tested more than what they actually are. They should have to go through scuba skills updates and they should have to do written exams in each year. And I gotta be honest with you guys, I kinda agree with that. I think to be a dive professional, to be the best that you can, you should be tested on your knowledge and your abilities and your skills, and you should always want to gain more experience. But at the same time, there's a lot of behind the scenes stuff that you guys out in the public don't get to see that we do actually have to go through those things. So what I'm gonna look at today is the top five things that dive instructors have to do, at least through the SSI system, to actually stay active. Number one. So the first thing that we've gotta do is pay our dues. So every year, usually November 1st until January 1st, we've got a renewal time frame. And this is where we actually pay our fees to SSI to actually stay a dive professional. Now, depending on what rank you are or what how high up the instructor column you are, your fees may vary. So you may have the minimum fee if you're a dive master, you may have a little bit higher fee if you're an instructor, or if you're an IT or an instructor certifier or something like that, you're going to have a much higher fee. But it's a really simple process. And one of the things that I really like is that SSI actually gives us kickback. So for each student that I train, I'm going to get a little kickback towards my renewal fee. And that kind of persuades us to get out there and actually be active as an instructor. And we're going to find out why being active as an instructor is actually very important to the actual renewal process as well, outside of the fact that we actually get a little kickback from our renewals. Number two, paperwork. There's always going to be paperwork no matter what, and even during the renewal process, it's really no different. Even if it's a digital renewal versus a hard copy renewal that we actually mail in or fax in, there's still paperwork. We have to go in and sign agreements saying that we will agree to abide by training standards. Uh, we agree to privacy uh, issues and things like that. We have to keep our medical up to date. Now, as a dive professional, it's a little bit different than, say, that open water student. When an open water student signs up for a class, they go through the medical questionnaire. And if there's any yeses on the medical questionnaire, then they actually have to have a medical signed by a physician or a doctor or somebody like that. Well, for the dive professionals, it doesn't matter if it's all no's and there are no yeses, we still have to have that medical filled out by a medical professional, say a physician or a doctor. So that's another thing that we have to do. Paperwork, and we always gotta make sure that we're in the best physical health possible to stay being a dive professional. Number three. So the next thing that we've got to do is actually stay up to date on our skills. Now, I know this is where the controversy comes in where people say, well, this instructor can't even teach this skill and he's out there certifying. The cool thing about SSI is we are actually required to stay up to date on our skills and there's several ways that we can do that. One of the quality control things that SSI has in place is they have a store or a course monitor for every single SSI facility. And his job is to make sure that classes are being taught by standards, to make sure that 
All the instructors are up to date with their skill sets and their watermanship tests. And pretty much he can tell an instructor, and it doesn't even matter if he's, a, say, an instructor trainer in IC. He can just be an open water instructor or he can be a store monitor. There's a lot of dive shops out there that are owned by non-diving professionals. They're just businessmen, and they are still the store monitors. They're the ones making sure the paperwork's getting done, making sure the people have the correct skill set to actually teach what they are trying to teach. And so, yes, we still get tested on it. Now, there's a lot of SSI facilities here in our direct area that actually put their professionals through a watermanship test every single year. And Lake Hickory Scuba is no different. I actually require all my professionals, myself included, to go through a watermanship test. That means we all do the instructor swim test at least once a year. We also go through the 24 basic skill sets. The same skills that you guys are learning in the open water program, we put our professionals through. Now, once I put my guys through, one of them will come and put me through the program as well. Now, it's not not like we're doing the entire open water program we're just doing these skill sets so we have our training slates we'll sit there and go through the training slates and we will sit there and observe to make sure that our guys can do it now since SSI is very strict as far as how we can com uh, complete a skill or sh demonstrate a skill we also make sure that we're doing it by the SSI standard and if we're not then of course we'll update ourselves to make sure that we're staying within standards of our training agency Number four. The next thing that we've got to do, of course, is an actual instructor update. Now, this is not so much on the skill side. This is more so on the standard side. And this is where we learn about all new coming standards for the upcoming year. And the instructor updates are actually mandatory. This is not something we have an option at. We can either go to a pre-scheduled update that is set by SSI in different locations all throughout the U.S., or we can actually do it at our dealer summits. Now, this is something that Lake Hickory Scuba does. We do it during our dealer summits. Now, what a dealer summit is, that's where multiple SSI training facilities will come together and we'll sit down and just have a powwow. We get to ask them, hey, how's your store doing? Economically, how are you doing here? How much gear are you selling? What classes are you teaching? What's a hot topic for you? And we just kind of sit there and brainstorm with each other to see how we can grow as an industry. The cool thing about SSI, we're not stores against stores. We are actually all training centers trying to grow as one. We want the scuba industry to flourish. And instead of bickering and fighting and, and going at each other to become competition, we work together as one family to make sure that the scuba industry grows the best that it can. So the dealer summits are usually a two-day process. The first day is the dealer summit. The second day is an actual instructor update. And there's usually two different updates. There's the instructor update, and then there's the instructor trainer update. And for anybody that's an AIT, which is an assistant instructor trainer, or an IT, an instructor trainer, or even an IC, an instructor certifier, we have a little bit more that we have to do as far as the update process than what the typical open water or the advanced open water instructor does. So during the first day, we have the dealer summit. During the second day, that's our actual instructor update. We go over all new training standards. We go over no, new skills that are coming out. We go over the SSI app. We go over the SSI digital systems and how things have changed and how we have to grow as it grows as well. So we actually stay up to date with that. Now these updates are actually ran all throughout the year, so it's not something that we always have to do, say in the month of November or the month of December or the month of January. They're spread out through the year, and that allows us plenty of time to actually go to the updates. Now, if we do not go to an update, what can actually happen is, is we can kind of get put into a review status, and that's basically where we can't teach. We're not authorized to teach until we've been updated. So that's the fourth thing that we actually do to stay up to date as a dive professional. Number five, the fifth thing that we've got to do to stay a dive professional is simply go diving. You know, as dive professionals, sometimes we forget where it is we came from and we forget why we got into this sport to begin with. It's all about that sense of adventure. It's all about going underwater and seeing what the other 75% of the world doesn't get to see. 
And so the more we dive, not only the better of a diver we'll become, but the more experience we will gain and the more that we can teach our students as well. If we simply forget where it is we come from, then we're just going to be bored. We're going to be stuck in a classroom all day teaching academic. We're going to be stuck in the same swimming pool, that 8 to 10 foot swimming pool, seeing nothing. And then the four 20 minute dives on a platform, yeah, they're not really fun. So the more experience we've got, the better that we will be as dive instructors as well. Remember, guys, it takes four things to be a diver. It takes proper knowledge, proper skills, proper equipment, and then that last one, of course, is experience. The more experience we have, the more that we can offer our students and our clientele out there. But guys, that's it. That's the top five things that we have to do to renew to be dive professionals. It doesn't matter what rank you are, whether you're a dive master, assistant instructor, an instructor, a specialty instructor, an instructor trainer, an instructor certifier, or an international training director, we all have to go through the same process process and it is a yearly thing. So don't listen to all those myths out there that instructors don't have to stay up to date. They don't have to do their skills because the reality of it is we do. Guys, I really hope you enjoyed this video. If you got any questions, please put it down in the comment section below and I'll try to answer it. We will be making a video here in a very sh short future as far as how to become a dive professional and I'll walk you through the process of doing that. We're actually fixing to start another ITC program here at our shop and that's basically the instructor training course. This is where we take dive masters and we turn them into instructors and we put them through a very lengthy training process and I'll kind of be walking you guys through that as well just so that you can see the procedure and maybe it might entice you to become a dive instructor as well. Oh and one more thing, check out the link below. We've actually got a new online store started now. We've got a couple little small products in there but if you like t-shirts and stuff and maybe ball caps check out the link below there'll be several different products that you can go ahead and purchase if you'd like it's got our logo on it and we're all the time coming up with new designs as well uh, but your support means the world to us so whether you click that subscribe button and hit that bell for us or you share these videos or you check out the link below to our new store and you buy some of the product we greatly appreciate everything that you guys do for us. If it wasn't you guys out here in YouTube land, we couldn't do what we do. But guys, as always, make sure you follow us on Instagram and Twitter, like us on Facebook, pin us on Pinterest, subscribe to us here on YouTube, and as always, guys, we appreciate your business.